Good evening. This week, India made global headlines. We beat all other countries in one sphere. In fact, we've left them all way behind. The World Health Organization, in its latest report, listed the 20 most polluted cities in the world, and the top 14 are in India. The report ranked cities in orders of detected levels of PM 2.5 airborne particulate matter, which is associated with higher levels of respiratory and cardiovascular disease. Now, Kanpur topped the list with a PM 2.5 level of 173. That is 17 times the safe limit. In close second place was Faridabad with 172. The third position goes to Prime Minister Modi's parliamentary constituency, Varanasi. And the list includes the national capital, Delhi, Gaya, Patna, Agra, Muzaffarpur, Srinagar, Gurgaon, Jaipur, Patiala, and then there's Jodhpur coming in at 14th place with 98. So tonight we're asking, is the air that you're breathing killing you? Actually, I take that back. We know that for a fact. What we should be asking is whether our government is taking steps to combat air pollution. This week, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change released a draft of National Clean Air Program, the NCAP, to address the looming air pollution crisis that most Indian cities currently face. Now, the draft plan is currently open for comments until the next week. Is the NCAP the answer to combat the extent of air pollution in the country? Is it at least a step in the right direction? What does it take to stop accepting pollution as the price of progress? We have a lot to get through on the show, so let's quickly introduce our guests. First, we have Vineet Goenka. He's a former national co-convener of the BJP IT cell. We have Ashish Ketan of the ARP. We have Ms. Mohammed Khan of uh, the Congress, Sunita Narayan. She's a director of the Center of Science and Environment. Rahul Ram, you know him as the lead vocalist of uh, Indian Ocean, which is India's first rock band. But he's also an activist with a PhD in environmental toxicology from Cornell. Jaydar Gupta, founder of Nirvana Being. He's the CEO of Vogmas India, also a parent and a concerned citizen of Delhi. David Reed, independent uh, TV producer, working as both a reporter for BBC World Television and Reuters TV. And also we have uh, Dr. Dr. Rajesh Chavla joining us. Thank you so much. He's also a pulmonologist joining us and cardiologist, I think. No, pulmonologist. Intensivist. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Sunita, I want to start with you. So this uh, study that's been done, uh, uh, the findings are from 2016. That's so right. uh, does that mean things have got, are we being alarmist? Does that mean things have gotten better? Because it's been two years and in these two years, there's been so much attention, yeah. so much focus on this yeah. issue, not just by the national press, even the international press. Yeah. No, sir, I think it is 2016 and the fact is things have got, things have happened. So let's not sit here and just beat, um, say that nothing happens. Things have happened. The government has taken some decisive steps as well. We have got BS6 fuel in um, Delhi, two years ahead of schedule, which is much cleaner than what we have ever seen before. That's going to happen by No, it's already happened. Okay. BS6 fuel has come in two years ahead of schedule. The problem has been the Indian automobile manufacturers who are dragging their feet uh, because they are not ready with technology, which would have really been a game changer. Um, we've also managed to get the two highways uh, done around Delhi, which will mean that the truck traffic will get bypassed. We've got a ban on pet coke in this region, which is a highly polluting fuel. Uh, so we have had steps, and I think this winter we should see some relief. However, I think what WHO study points to is two things that we must remember. One, that the scale of the crisis is massive. So it's not just Delhi alone and not That's just in the, the winter. That's the second thing. That's the second thing. The first is that the scale. The fact is pollution levels are so out of whack now that your, your intervention, your... Your response has to be equally big. You can't talk anymore about few buses here or, you know, one power station shutting down there. You have to talk about a massive transition to gas. You have to talk about a massive move away from private transport. You have to do big things to deal with it. And the second thing is that it's not just Delhi. Remember that in Delhi we monitor, we have 30 monitoring stations 
which give us real time information at every locality of the city. However, you do not have monitoring stations in Gurgaon. You do not have monitoring stations in Noida. You do not have monitoring stations in Bangalore. So be very clear, the people in Bangalore think that they are safe, okay? It's only safe because you there's a conspiracy of silence. So be very clear about that. Okay, so you're saying you need big steps, right? Is the NACP a big step? Well, the <laughs> NACP, I think, is still too small a step, in my view, because what it does is to acknowledge the problem, which I think is big, because the government, which is a start, and I don't want to at this stage say that's not good. That's a start, it's good, we have a plan. However, what it lacks is any deadlines, any time frames beyond the monitoring stations. It does not really talk about the big transitions that we need to move towards. And it does not really understand the kind of crisis, public health emergency, that we are dealing with. I think the Ministry of, in my view, when I've, you know, over the last few years, I think the Ministry of Petroleum, Ministry of Surface Transport are far more aggressive then sometimes I feel the Ministry of Environment. Interesting. Okay, um, Vineet, you know what, um, Sunita, you just touched upon gas, the issue of gas. Now, this report, the WHO report, actually points to the Prime Minister's pet project, which mm. is the Ujwala Yojana, talking about how giving free uh, LPG connections to women below the poverty line can be a huge game changer. But that is the only initiative that this, this report could look at from this government. So is the government waking up to the enormity, the alarm, alarm that we need around this problem? Ah, before I start, I'm, I don't represent the government, but what I'm going to speak is from my heart and I, what I understand about the policies. I think the gas part is very big. Today is being a Mother's Day. Uh, I think the Prime Minister hit the home, the mother itself, because it starts from the micro level, that's the home. When you change the gas levels in the house, the CO2 levels in the house, it changes. It impacts the health there, it uh, impacts the awareness level. So one, we should acknowledge that there is an awareness which is there in the current uh, regime, which is there in the center, as well as various state governments, irrespective of which party they come from. All mm. of them acknowledge this problem. So that gas is one part. Second part, which we see is the LED uh, bulbs. So which I think Sujata missed is, the number of LED bulbs which have been changed are in crores. So the total uh, megawatt saved is almost into what? Tonnage? 15,000? Un unfortunately, Vineet, it's nothing to do with air pollution. What will deal with air pollution is when you actually change the thermal power plants and you move them to cleaner emission norms or move them to gas. So, so LED is very important from an energy efficiency point of view. Yeah, we'll I'm sorry to interrupt, but from an air pollution point of view, it's really emissions. But energy efficiency yeah, is also needed. You, when you no, no, let me ask you a quick question. For example, I'm going to let you, I'm going to go back to you only, but to Segal, for example, who's a very well-known environmentalist, has, has tweeted, what is the point of pontificating about a national clean air program if simultaneously Simultaneously, our government allows lobbies for dirty coal, dirty oil, and dirty mining to rule India's policy making. So, I'll answer so when both you say of you. You have to small give me some scale, micro, that. and yeah. macro, doesn't it have to go together? Yeah, I'll answer both of you. What I understand is small. The first step was the usual origin of it is the cooking gas. Second one is LED. Mm. More than 29 crore bulbs, what I read in the Feb or so. After that, I was unable to read what the reports came up. And it, the electricity which is generated, if it is generated through hydel or nuclear, then it is probably green. But if it's generated through thermals, then you know what is the quantity of air fuel or the fly ash which is generated after that. B. Number three, if you see, the mass rapid transport uh, projects which are going on in Mumbai, in Nagpur, in Pune, also in Bangalore, Chennai, Kochi, various places. I think this mass rapid transport mm. will take away a lot of cars which are there in the public domain. Third, I would also like to appreciate one more initiative which Mr. Mr. Gadkari started. A 1,000 crore plantation of saplings near the uh, highways, the parallels of the highway. See, we'll have to realize one more thing. Uh, 150 years back, Britishers pushed GIPR on us. That is the Great Indian Peninsula Railway. And they killed our internal waterways. Somebody who understands transport, transportation understands the total consumption of fuel on water is far less than on road. And probably this regime has revived the entire internal waterways. The first one is Baraka Farak uh, transportation, which is there, the Faraka to 
uh, Hubli River. Hmm. Now, once it starts, the total consumption of fuel between this uh, entire uh, segment will be less. The Assam project, which is going on, I'm trying to recollect the name, but the Assam one, 121 kilometers waterways is also an excellent example. So they are doing many things. So we it's not only the house, on the road. We can also That's a, a whole separate The consumption issue, of diesel. I'll tell you one, one challenge, which I, uh, I was there in one of the discussion with Mr. Gadkari, and Mr. Gadkari told me a very good thing. He said, we, need, we wanted to do, do away with uh, boats. Now, what happens is, the courts have ordered them not to put in water, diesel boats so that there is no water pollution. See the quantity Rightly of the pollution so. comparative to what it happens. So you have to do a comparative analysis. We cannot just go to a stone agents and they will stop all this transportation. So the comparative was less. But somebody says you can't use diesel. Now there is no electric boats available where you can do a mass rapid transportation on the water. So these are challenges. We are not only governed by legislations made by the law enforcers or lawmakers, but also by rulings of courts. So what we'll have to do is when you criticize somebody, you'll have to understand why they were unable to do that particular part. Now, apart from this road segment, uh, what okay. they have majorly done is, if you understand, is identifying which are the polluting units, changing the technology. And this is the first government probably which is using geospatial technologies, the use of GIS technology to identify where are the emissions going and to replace that. So, acknowledging assessment and then alternates. I think this 3A okay. gives them an A plus rating. Okay, Ashish Khatan, Vidit says the BJP gets an A plus rating when it comes to identifying a problem firstly and then working towards solving it. Can you tell us what the Ahmadni Party has done? Because it's both an advantage and a disadvantage. The fact is, Delhi may not be the most polluted, Kanpur clearly is, but it had first mover advantage in a sense. It, it has been the epicenter of this problem for the past three, four years. Right, so um, I will just uh, divide my answer into two parts. One is I will just uh, take forward from where Sunita left, which is that now the problem has moved beyond Delhi, it has moved beyond NCR, it is a national problem. And now the realization is that the response also has to be national. It cannot be city specific or region specific because whether it is Delhi or say Varanasi, the pollution is not just originating from sources within that city. Like, especially in the case of Delhi, Delhi is also impacted by the policies of Haryana, by the policies of, or the lack of policies in Uttar, Uttar Pradesh and so on. So the second thing is what Aam Aadmi Party has done, or what the, what the government has done in Delhi. Government in Delhi, first of all, we have improved the implementation part, because a lot of it lies in the realm of enforcement. Uh, dust control measures enforcement, enforcement, whether uh, dry leaves are being burned, garbage is being burned, uh, thermal power plants are being regulated. We have shut down a couple of power units. We tried odd even, which was at that point quite, uh, you know, extraordinary and path breaking. And we are trying to improve. Those short term measures. Ashish, we need, no for, for example, in point. Of this. I mean, we don't see a consistent and committed effort. All of this comes up in the in November for like a few days no, when the paddy burning stuff no, moves I, in. No, I, I don't think that's true. Because we talk pollution only in certain periods, that's what we believe that the government is only responding periodically. The government is acting uh, 365 days in a year, implementation, enforcement, whatever we can do, but the problem has moved beyond the realm of one government or a couple of departments. So what have you done on local issues? For example, Vineet mentioned mass yes. transport, right? Yes. Uh, on the bus, buses issue, yes. for example, like London has what about eight million people? It has nine thousand buses. Will address Delhi that. has sixteen million I will people. Address that. Has five thousand buses. I, I will address what happened that. to the promises of buses? Yeah, Delhi perhaps needs twenty thousand buses, maybe more. Bus procurement has been a big tangle, which this gov government inherited as a legacy, because there has not been. Just give me a moment. There has not been a single new bus procured in Delhi since two thousand eight. This government came into power in 2015. That is we have tried true. to untangle this tangle. There is right now a plan to procure 3,000 new buses. Can we not talk Come about on. legacies? No, no, I'm just trying to tell you. The British and what the colonial the, see, handover is. And you're I'm talking just trying about to explain. Of I'm, trying to explain. I'm not doing blame game here. I'm trying to explain there are, it was a big tangle. Just recently we floated a tender to procure 1,000 buses. No bid, no bid came, only one bid came. Now we have to rebid it. Because Delhi can only procure CNG buses. So we what? cannot procure diesel buses. It so will be rebid. And if again one bit comes, again we will go with one bit. So there are okay, problems. Okay. Land yes. also needs to be tied up for Vineet, every You use the same procured. excuse when it came to the BJP. You said when there's a government in power, they are trying, but they have to factor in things like 
courts and laws and tenders. Aap is saying the same thing. Would so, you agree? Yeah, yeah, I agree with him what he said. Because when you do an act, you have to go through the legacy also. When I said GIPR killed Indian waterways, so if you have seen Mangal Pandey, he that's an example where the rivers were used. So they have been killed. So when you revive it, it takes a lot of action. It's not a simple boardroom discussion. So I agree with him one point that there are a lot of tangles which have to be untangled. But there are some small things which I think the central government has done which we should recognize. Like for example, giving depreciation of 50% to the electrical run vehicles in place of 15% of the regular conventional vehicles. Promoting uh, electrical bus within the parliament complex so that, so that people get aware about so that. Parliament the can live in unpolluted air no, so Somewhere it will start. You, you cannot just push on 2,000 buses theory. a day. Once, once the prime minister uses that bus there in the parliament comp complex, it gives a statement across the country. The e-rickshaws which has been floated around, I think these are some small steps been taken, but they are firm steps and larger steps which are there. This will result into a lot of saving of fuels, a lot of saving of carbon footprints in this country. So that there I agree. I think one more uh, taxi integrator, I, if it is Ola, if I am not incorrect, is going to procure somewhere around 10,000 taxis which are running on electricity, not on any other biofuel. So these kind of small steps will help the so country. you are disagreeing. Why? No, I am not disagreeing. I am just thinking that we should move beyond this, what AAP yeah, did we'll have to and start what, somewhere. what we'll have BJP to start. The first does step has and to all the rest of it. I mean, step. listen, <coughs> I, I don't represent any political party here. I am just an air pollution activist. I can tell you that the central government has taken some steps, as I have right in the beginning said. Yeah. Uh, they, some of them have been bold, which is what I acknowledge, where it's aggressive action. But everything else is too little, too late. And that is my only bottom line, that as yet governments are not beginning to understand the scale of the transformation. And I'm sorry, Ashish, we cannot still talk about the Ashish, fact that three years later, we don't have buses. We need much higher, much higher levels of intervention to move to much greater scale. I mean, we need to get people off cars. And the only way to do that is to have convenient, modern, safe public transport systems Absolutely. in which, which is, we are not even close to it, okay? Ashish, so I think and, and I, why, over why the past buses, two years, why not bicycles? yeah, everything. Why, why but it's all a combination. combination. Well, let's start by buses. Because I mean, we can no, argue we, about. We, ha we yeah. are not starting with buses because for three years. We've Ashish, been, in the last two years, Delhi has only had eight days when pollution levels have met WHO safety standards. That's a, a, a study that we had out of CSE. That is alarming. The government is doesn't seem to be concerned. Oh, no, no. Uh, I mean. I think that's a little unfair to say that the government is not concerned because if you remember within six months of coming into power, this government came up with odd even scheme and we got a lot of heat. We got heat from the courts, we got heat from the automobile lobbies, we got a lot of flack, but we did it twice. So it's completely unfair to say that the government is not concerned as far as just if you talk about one piece which is procurement of buses and I believe that that's not the only piece, Sunita is absolutely right. The problem is too immense, too humongous just to focus on just one piece. Okay, that not just buses, let, what happened to complete. the Delhi Ridge, protecting the ridge, what happened to the ban on plastics, what happened to all of these No, the plastic is banned. The plastic beyond a certain dimension is banned. Use of 25 is banned. states in India have banned so, uh, just, sir, just give liberal me a use of plastic. See, if you just want to talk about Delhi, Delhi has three governments, central government, state government, local government. There are a lot of action which lies with the local government, which are municipal bodies. There are four municipal bodies in Delhi with huge budgets lot of action which lies in the realm of the central government. I'm not trying to point fing uh, finger at somebody that he has not done something or that person has not done something. What I'm trying to say is that this problem requires much more than what we are doing right mm. now. I completely agree, I agree with Sunita. We have to now focus on national air plan. And as Sunita said, this is a small step. I would say this is a first step that the central government has come out with a plan that we will support certain number of monitoring stations because apart from Delhi, there are very few monitoring stations in other cities. But after monitoring, what next? Because, Sarah, we have created a system for 70s and 80s. All these acts were written in 70s and 80s. State Pollution Control Board, Center Pollution Control Board were created in 70s and 80s. Today, every individual is a polluter. It is not just Correct. industry which is a polluter. Every individual I is agree. a polluter. That I agree. So that's so, why we have to move beyond this response, which is, I agree, Ashish, is every, not every adequate. state in this Hold country on, has Minit, every, 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 every geography plan. in this country has three governments. No, every, so I'm, there is a place Minit, for let's Jay. Jay. Let's Jay. 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 Jay.
you, you know what, I, I BJP would love to take this response. conversation away from politics and politicians because I've been listening to this for three years, all this politics playing out in front of cameras and it's going nowhere because this is all glib, there's no action. Uh, the, the national clean air program that I've read and we've redrafted, the hundred of us got together this past week and we've redrafted it and we're submitting that redraft. It's, it's absolutely aimless and goalless. There's no conviction, there's no commitment. Uh, just by adding monitor monitoring is not going to solve our problems. You know, today is Mother's Day and by taking this uh, dialogue away from politics and politicians, I mean, I want to appeal to mothers. You have a strong vested interest in the health of your child. And fathers. And, and, and fathers, but today is Mother's Day, so that's why I'm appealing to mothers. <laughs> uh, you know, please step up. You know, your schools are doing nothing. Why, why is the school encouraging activity and physical education and, and soccer and cricket? Why are we playing the IPL in Delhi? This, this city is not fit for sport. Every sportsman needs to be exported out of the city to a coastal area or, or, or down south, wherever it's safe. I don't even know. I, and I, I even want to challenge this WHO report. I don't think it's the top 14. I think it's the top 200 cities of the world that are in India. The other, the other 186 just haven't been monitored. We are living in absolutely pathetic, pathetic con uh, conditions. We have fallen into a convenience trap. These are all because of conveniences. Today we want mineral water and you know these single serve bottles, and we are t generating tons and tons of trash. So you know, at, at a government level, maybe we should start with coming out with some policies where I'm penalized for the amount of kilos of trash that I put out every day. Correct. You know, maybe that's a good place to start. But. Yeah. Citizens have to take their health and their environment into their own hands. You have to actually look at everything you do on a daily basis and analyze what kind of trash. Every time you have a coffee, you're creating trash. Every time you drink water, you're creating trash. Every time you have fast food, you're tr creating trash. Let's you have to analyze everything. No, and I think both you and Ashish have hit on something. Do we also, as the public, need to look inwards at ourselves, right? We have that Absolutely. Ghazipur, uh, Dump Lanford. site. It's one of the four in the in the capital. Mm -hmm. We had that accident where it collapsed, and then two people lost their lives when they were washed away into a canal. That's right. It's a 15-story building. This the NDTV office is six stories. That's 15 stories. Just imagine of just dump. That's mountain of trash, which is a stark reminder of government's apathy on this issue. We have no alternatives to dispose of. 10,000 tons of trash that are generated every day by Delhiites. And the municipal corporation comes under the BJP. I think for the past 15 years, it's been under the BJP and they've not identified <coughs> any other site. Is that right. correct? Right. Well, there is Priyanka. You're Priyanka? Yeah. So, uh, Priyanka, is you are also a resident of East Delhi. Yes, I am. What would you say in response? Uh, because you believe in sustainable development. Yeah, what so you say I to agree with uh, both of them when they say that citizens have to take responsibility for their own trash and uh, we need to understand that we are responsible for the waste that we create. So as a family, uh, we are actually doing that. This is um, your family? That's your yes, son? Yes, that's my son, Ariman, and that's my husband, Vishal. So uh, we're in this together. I mean, and What are you uh, doing when you say we're doing that? Yeah, so the first thing that we do is that we separate our waste. Our wet waste is separated from the dry waste. Then we have the reject waste separately and e-waste. So we have four waste segregation. And uh, all the wet waste that we create at home, which is uh, the kitchen waste, is converted into compost in a very simple home composting unit. So that's 60%. So I just want to play devil's advocate. Many people will ask, you must have a big house, you must have a garden. I have a you very have small house. I have no garden, just a little green patch, which you can cover in five steps. So it's just one corner of my house where I have this home composting unit. It takes like what, um, maybe this two feet. Yeah. As so why did you start decide to do this? Uh, well, I uh, was inspired by somebody close to me, and uh, I didn't know actually about it. So the first thing that we, I don't know, nobody's talking about uh, creating awareness on how easy it is to actually convert 60% uh, of the waste created in the homes into uh, useful uh, compost. So again, can I be uh, devil's advocate? Do you think it makes a difference? It makes a huge difference, I think. You're and we need to believe that one person can make a difference because this one person is sitting here and talking and there's so many people listening. I think so sustainable living is something that that's needs to be the mantra because, you know, 
So if one person and 16 million residents of Delhi, if everybody did that, it would all amount, oh, add up to something. It's going to make more difference than any of these people sitting here can make. <laughs> if you can build an army of people we, we, like we've us. We've been waiting for politics okay. and politicians to help for three years and it, no, no, not, we've seen no change. Just so talk. we've got to help ourselves. We, we, what, we're what on our own name, on this. young man? Uh, Ariman. So do you do what your mom says? How is, how, how is your life changed? Are you doing anything differently from your friends? to? protect the environment? Yeah, well, uh, uh, I carry my water bottle e everywhere, so I don't have to use the plastic bottles that uh, they uh, provide uh, some pl and some places. Yeah. So you don't have to buy new bottles yeah, of water everywhere you go. That's great. That's a small start. OK, can we, can we get more reactions from the audience? How many of you, will you respond to this? You know, we keep waiting for the government to act. What are we doing ourselves? We're talking about uh, BS6. It's going to be more expensive, right? Prices no, of BS6 cars will go up a little bit. Well, actually, governments absorb the cost, and okay. so it's. Uh, I mean, BS6 is here. The big issue is how many of us use diesel cars? Because yeah, if how many we do, of us use diesel cars? Then for example, we are in trouble. Cheaper. How many of us have a diesel car or would buy a diesel car because it's cheaper? Are you willing yeah. to take a higher cost, a pinch it's to your own pocket, still. for Ten the greater good of the difference. environment? Well, as speaking as a delight, I don't think so, that we are prepared. I see uh, everywhere people lifting around. And as this kid said, that I mean, uh, we I need to be so. very responsible uh, ourselves. As far as BS6 is concerned, I don't sh I'm not sure that the technology that we are using in um, an automobile, that we are prepared for that or not. So we, we are prepared. We are yeah. exporting that technology all over the world. We are just not prepared to use it here because the automobile lobby is too yeah, that strong. Is, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, uh, what so about pollution control certificates? Uh, you one thing I would like to actually uh, get a response from Mr. Khetan. Uh, the DMRC, Delhi Metro, was such a success story, and I'm proud of it as a delight. I want to ask you one question. There was a study in 2014, right, which said that Delhi was keeping 2,30,000 vehicles out of the road, I mean, keeping away from the road, right? Uh, in the past one year, we have had two steep fare hike, right? And as a result, I just read like two, three days before, I mean, as a result, two, three lakhs people, three lakh people daily, right? They are not commuting by metro because of this steep fare hike. I mean, are we going backwards? Because Delhi metro was such okay. a Okay, uh, that's a very good question, and you seem very informed. I don't know how you missed this point. Because Delhi government fought a pitched battle with the central government. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I and know. we insisted that it should not be, the fare should not be hiked, but it, because, uh, the central government uh, rode roughshod over the Delhi government and they Absolutely. still went ahead with no, it. I'm not blaming yes. to be very true. So we are against uh, metro fare hike. The hike in metro fare has led to a drop, a sharp drop uh, in uh, ridership and that's not good. You are absolutely right on that. Count. So, so Sarah, a yeah. very, very oh. easy fix to this and a country like Singapore which has leadership would do this. You would put a cess on diesel vehicles and you would make public transportation like the metro free. So something like somebody like Singapore would do that. But we have put a cess on diesel vehicles. No, we you, are you collecting need, a fair amount of money. We've collected Jay, a thousand I mean, crore on a congestion charge on diesel car vehicles coming into Delhi. So the question is Japan. how we are spending so it. So there's a huge debt need to be served. So it is not possible to just make everything free. But yes, it is absolutely mm -hmm. important to keep the metro fare within reasonable limits. So more and people, more and more people are encouraged to use it. In fact, so the, I, most, the, mo the most successful governments are dealing with environmental issues have been authoritarian governments. That's right. And in fact, like if you, China, uh, like China, if if you introduce command and control, and if you close down power stations, and if you wield the stick rather than using tax incentives, it works. You have to prove that you're serious. But it doesn't right. only have to be authoritarian governments. What about Mexico? But you just have to be a government that has the political will, will and, and is prepared to be unpopular with a certain constituency <laughs> that you're going right. to punish. That's I right. think, yeah, that's yeah. a punchline. But David, you know, for any foreign correspondent, the obvious story, the first story really to do if you land over here is pollution, mm. right? And it's almost as if it's a right of initiation for all foreign correspondents. But how do you see this? Because we seem to be desensitized to a problem that nobody, whether you're rich or you're poor, we can't shelter ourselves from. 
No, I mean, uh, the, po the point is that people often think that pollution, air pollution is democratic. It's not. It, 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 you, can, you can protect yourself from it. The notion is that it's democratic and everyone gets poisoned by it. But if you, you, have, the where, if you have the financial wherewithal, if you, if you, if you have the money, you can, you can protect yourself through Mr. Gupta's technology. You can send your children either to the American school, the British school, that has wall-to-wall -wall, uh, air, air filtration systems. So effectively, you can put your children into, into a clean air bubble. Oh and right. and, and I, have bubble. I have other people who even uh, are no longer satisfied with that and have sent their children back to, uh, to Europe or to the United States. And they, they, want, they have the money, they have the financial packages so that they can fly is back. Is your family here in India? My, my daughter is sitting here in the audience, and she, but she is about, uh, we don't want to, I don't want her to spend another winter here, so she's going to go back to Europe, and I'll stay here. Hi, what's your name? How old are you? <laughs> my name is Victoria Reed, uh, and I'm 14 years old. And how are you enjoying, uh, how was your last winter in Delhi? Um, well, my last, well, I do play a lot of sports, at school and of course with the pollution when it's over 250 we're not allowed to play sports mm. at school so um, winters aren't very fun we can't really go out much um, even if it's just a party in the evening our parents won't let us go because if it's outside there'll be too much pollution uh, everyone goes around in, uh, with a mask I go to the French school so everyone goes around with a mask and um, some days while well, the schools are closed so nobody goes to school I mean you're sacrificing your children's education by um, having so much pollution. Well, I th at, at one level, like you said, it's, we have a 14-year-old here who's talking about not being allowed to go out for parties. Mm. On the other hand, you have children who are living in construction sites who are breathing this all day. I, abso Rahra. Absolutely. There's a, there's a class element to it. I mean, because I just sound like a sort of whinging white guy if I, if I complain about, you know, and it's my choice to be here. It is my Correct. choice. My issue is, and, and Vicky's going to be going back to Europe this winter, is what happens when Vicky turns to me at the age of 25 and says, oh, I've got a shadow on my lung, I've possibly got a tumour. I mean, how do I then justify that with her and say to her, well, actually, but I had a really good experience in So the in professional India, satisfaction of working in India hmm? makes up for this? No, it doesn't at all. I mean, and, and, that, and I think, you know, talking, this is the issue that every, every parent, parent is having to with. deal with. I mean, you've got Indians moving to Mysore, for example, people from Delhi who, who are independent enough or are creative in, in, their, in the work they're doing. They can move to Mysore because there's adequate internet and they can just make their appointments in Delhi. But this is a and class thing. And this is out. people who can afford to do that. But not everybody can afford it. Rahul, come in over here. Are we as a middle, th does the middle class, is the middle class willing to accept that we also have a role to play? I don't know. I, I hope they do. I think what we need really is a children's movement. Children's movement. See, everybody is saying parents' responsibility. Actually, the guys who are suffering the most are the kids. Mm. Because they have way longer to live with this horrible air. Mm. When I was a kid, we didn't have horrible air. Okay, So maybe we are not getting the cancers and so on and so forth to the level we should be. But these kids, one year old, two year old, three year old, all over Delhi, all of Delhi sitting here driving their ACs and their multiple cars and ek packet biscuit ke saath bhai sab ek panni de do you know mm. it's it's a mindset which wants all these amenities of quote unquote modern life and the packaging of the, the biscuits have also changed from when i was yeah. a child to what i what i get today if i would Nobody buy one carries a cloth bag to yeah. the market why we didn't have plastic i remember when mother dairy came out with these plastic milk packets we used to reuse them. it's a completely different world and I think the middle class needs but to uh, get uh, if back I can in. play devil's advocate, that's progress. Look at how first world we are. Look, this is, that's what I'm saying. This is not progress. This is a Western idea of development that has been shoved down our throats, and that we need to say no. Oh yeah, like you're saying, less consumption, sustainable livelihoods, frugal Perfectly. technology. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, I, so I, yeah. Rahul, I, I just let's, let's get in, let's get in the doctor ah. here because he is, uh, you know, children are the worst affected. That's clearly. That's clear. You know, because their lungs are not developed. And, you know, if you really see what the discussion is going on, in the coming years, we will not have a good sportsman from Delhi. Because half of the time, they can't play. Their efficiency, because the carbon dioxide in the evening <coughs> is very high, and the carbon monoxide, it causes fatigue, lethargy. Their stamina is going to go down. So they, you need really a comprehensive plan. 
at the central level, at the government level, the political <coughs> will has to be, and like the Rahul said, you know, everybody has to participate. It is not only the government. Government can't do unless, you know, if you go around walking, I mean, you drive, all around there is a construction and there is no, no, no barricades. It's all open. And if, if just now there was a storm and you see the environment, it, it, you need the, the, the rules are there, but they are not getting implemented. Like, you know, I, I was very happy when the AAP came into power. The first time you saw some government coming out, but sporadic. It's not consistent. It has to be on a continuous basis. Like today, there was a study published by NASA. Uh, it is in the, today it is published that they had done a study and they found stubble burning and they found the PM 2.5 level at that point, it's October and November went down many times. And, uh, you know, so they, you have a comprehensive plan. There is a rule in Punjab and Haryana, but it's not being implemented. Nothing is being implemented. Because you see, mm -hmm. the rules are there. Not only you have to implement, like he is saying, kids. Kids have to make a movement. The schools have to participate. The, 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 the professionals have to participate. Like they are saying, they are having, but it has to be, you know, widely well, if people kids should in America use. can do it with the, with access to guns after what happened in Florida. You know, Maybe living in Delhi, can also speak up according to the, the study, it decreases your life by two to three years. You know, now the, the longevity from 34, when the independence, it is risen to 65. But Delhi persons definitely are going to li live shorter, according to a study. And, you know, the diseases, like the respiratory diseases are rising. What, as a pulmonologist, I'm seeing, the cough does not respond as it used to respond 10, year, 10 mm. years ago. And they don't have the lung function. Everything is normal. But they have a persistent cough. So these kind of problems in the coming years are going to... And I think we need a ministry of pollution. You know, it is so severe. You know, environment, it is like there are so many... Uh, things to stress upon Ministry of Pollution with clear policy like NEPC. I mean, there should be more policy. And the, in the, in the, the, so the, let the state I want to go across to him. Oh, Mr. Khan's been waiting. I just want to go across to him. So, coming over, you've also been an advisor to uh, the former Environment Minister. So, yes. coming over here yeah. because we're blaming the uh, central government and the Delhi government right now. Yeah. But, for example, what has the Congress government done? And, for example, in Karnataka, where you hear of lakes that are frothing, etc., why does this just not show up even on our manifestos, these kinds of issues? So it affects us the most. Right. Um, so, it's been very interesting to listen to this debate so far. And it's laudable to hear citizens talk about what they can do. It's laudable to hear citizens like the gentleman from Wogmas saying that when they got the draft of the NACP, they proactively took it upon themselves to draft a better version and send it to the government. These are all citizen-centric activities, and it's very laudable. What is sad, Sarah, is that they also imply an abdication of responsibility on the part of the central and the state governments, and an acknowledgment on their part that they have failed. I say hold your leaders accountable. Of course it is political, and I'll tell you why. Your climate policy, your approach to the environment, is determined by the priorities of those in power. It's as simple as that. Um, let me give you an example, and you'll accuse me of being political, but that's fair, and it's important your people hear this. When Prime Minister Modi was asked about his response to climate change by a bunch of school children, actually, he, in a very pithy way, and pithy is being kind, he said, no, no, there's no such thing as climate change. As you grow old, you start feeling colder. You know, that, that sort of down, that sort of attitude towards climate change is a disservice towards people. It's a disservice towards the attention our problems deserve. Another BGP member of parliament stood up and called it a mythia, a figment of the Western imagination. You need to prioritize the environment. You asked me what the Congress did. Do you know in 1972, somebody spoke about the acts going back to that era? Do you know why the acts go back to that era? Because Indira Gandhi, when the first conference of parties, the first conference on climate change happened in the world at Stockholm, the only head of state, other than the host country, to attend was Indira Gandhi. Do you know Silent Valley, which is in Kerala, one of our most biodiverse and uh, nature-rich parks? Do you know at a point of time, the government had put forth a proposal to build a dam there, a power plant? Indira Gandhi vetoed it. You have to balance these costs. Okay, My final point Mr. is this. Khan, no, no. I'm sorry. You're I, I want to no, let me need, No, I'll tell you. Let, I, I, no, no, I don't want to go back Mr. to this. Can, 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 can I bring this debate back to where I think? Yeah, yeah, just ahead. one point I want to make. Look, let's talk about concrete objectives. In 2015, the Ministry of Environment and Forests 
came up with standards for thermal emissions. Coal is what we're talking about, right? One of the largest sources of pollution. In 2017, this same Ministry of Environment and Forest stood before the Supreme Court and asked for a seven-year extension. You tell me where their priorities lie. And then you ask we them the questions. We need quick response because it is true. We've had a former environment minister who just dismissed any international study saying this is an international Not current. Current. current environment minister who said <clears throat> that these are conspiracy theories all the West is trying to hold <clears throat> India back. So I think no, this is the first government, what I understand with my limited knowledge, uh, where not the single ministry, but all the ministries are sensitive. I gave you example of the petroleum ministry where the Ujala uh, Ujana came in, the road ministry where Mr. Gadkari talked about uh, planting the saplings. Now let me talk about the agriculture ministry. So two things, one of the things which Ashish pointed out, the stable burning in Punjab also impacts the uh, pollution level here in uh, Delhi. The technology to, conserve, uh, to convert that into energy has been bought in and there, there are experiments are going, the pilot is going on. Now you can't just bring it and throw it on the face of the people in Punjab. So that is one uh, step which has been taken. Second. By the state government. Yeah, yeah, maybe no, the no, state no, government. No, I'm no, not no, trying to no, see, no, I'm no, not no, trying to take over. No, sir, you no, 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 yeah, I'm no, saying, no, let, no, let no, me no, give no, you all no, the, no, yeah, yeah, so I'm not, as I said earlier, I'm not representing the government, I'm not representing DGB. Why can't they just stop rooting So yeah, so it has been done by anybody. Maybe it is done by Punjab government. So let me just complete my point. So that the boy is already there. Let me complete the point. So that I didn't disturb anybody. That's something everyone can I didn't disturb anybody when they were speaking. So I think that was the first step. Whichever government did it, but it was the first step to do it. Second one is, what happened in Gujarat and I like that soil health card. You pump in urea in soil. What happens is when you pump that, that is a pollution one level and when the ureas are manufactured somewhere in the plant, fertilizer plants, they create another level for this. The soil health card will determine what is the optimum utilization of fertilizers or manure. That will reduce okay. the consumption of urea. It will save subsidy. It okay. will save the production of urea. I think Sunita, these are some great steps, not only by pollution department, but by agriculture department. So, so I can go like that. I'll just move on. I just want now, to say one more thing. The human resource department. If the government is going on growth, what would you say? Hold on, we need let her respond now. I think, I think, let me not get into all governments are acting. No, no, but you'll have to hear to the changes which have been there. See, if you don't listen to the policy changes which have come the last few years. She's aware of them. 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 Right. You, you cannot sir, just, there cannot sir, be a pollution in the air to stop my voice. There, there is I've been this listening is very patiently to everybody. Sunita has waited very patiently. Yeah, I was I've also patient. Her. But why when I started Can speaking, we just be, we're, just we're out of bargain. time. Can I just hear what Sunita has to say? Yeah, because I think um, if I was to say I was the one who was actually talking about what government has done, all the other actions don't have anything to do with air pollution. So let's get our facts straight. And let's get a two man. Listen, they least two listen, pollution man. Where is the listen, thermal I'm the environmentalist here. Yes, yes, so can you, but can I'm also you a policy me? member. How can, can you shoot us down? Can we just let her speak? Can I? It's an can I? 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 We talked about air pollution. I think the one thing we have to understand, it's a great equalizer. Yeah. When it comes to water pollution, we're all sitting here with these bottles because we, the rich, don't drink or care about the state of our rivers, okay? But when it comes to air, and I can assure you, none of you, if any one of you think you're wearing his mask and you're going to be safe, if you think that you're using an air purifier in your house and you're safe, you're not safe, okay? Because today the toxins have mutated. You no longer have PM. You have ozone, ground level ozone. And ground level so, ozone is found where the rich live because it, it migrates to where the air is cleaner. So if anyone thinks they're safe, forget it. This is a great equalizer. But also, Sarah, I think it's important for us as middle classes to know we are part yeah. of the problem, okay? Yes. It is because of us that government holds back every time any harsh measure because it's we required. are the ones who will cry the loudest yes. when it comes to cars we are the ones who said no odd and even if anything is done to prioritize no, buses we are the first ones we always have a genuine reason to say why not somebody else the farmers of punjab have become the easiest target for all of us Correct. because it's somebody else it's not us the only story that I love in India is the kind of story that you talked about, madam. But where it is coming from is Kerala, where the poor people in Kerala are saying, not in my backyard. 
When the poor start saying in this country, not in my backyard, then the rich will understand. I think well, this is the biggest issue. Before we even go to the poor, issue. I think you're right to focus on the See, middle class. All we, is wrong. I, I have one example. I, we have to go in for a I would short beg 30 break. Seconds from you. It's a one example a, of Rishikesh. I don't have a choice. I have to go into a break. Uh, if the middle class stops thinking about the immediate effect that it's going to have on your pocket and think about the larger picture, that might be helpful. We have to go in for a short break. Let's come back after that. Welcome back. You're watching We The People. We're talking about pollution as usual. David, you mentioned how many are escaping uh, India, moving abroad. We have one person here who joins us, uh, Namitha, who had the option of moving to the US, right? You lived in the US, you came back, and then you considered moving back, but you chose not to. Why? Um, so I moved back uh, after 12 years in the US to you know, come back to India, to be here with my family. And unfortunately, I'm asthmatic, so is my dad, my daughter. It runs in our family. And I moved here in 2013, December, and I was actually pregnant with my second child at the time. And 2014 was when Delhi was declared the most polluted city in the world. Um, and I had a terrible winter. I had terrible asthma throughout my pregnancy. My daughter had several emergency visits. My dad just came out of ICU you know, in two weeks. Um, and it was just frustrating for me that the level of awareness in the country around air pollution right. back in 2014 was so bad. Like, you know, when I talked to my daughter's children, teachers about keeping her indoors, um, you know, on bad pollution days, they laughed at me, right? When I told people that air pollution was really bad, they told me, oh, it's, you know, it's where the monitor is. My house is clean, right? So this is why I actually started a company, Airveda, to manufacture air quality monitoring equipment so that we could act people could actually monitor what they were breathing in their houses, that we could actually set up monitors around the country in locations where no monitors existed. And so I've been working for the past three years to make monitoring much more easily available in the country so people can so actually everybody individually see get and involved. understand how but bad isn't the, the irony is. also, like, I mean, both Jay and you have, in a sense, monetized on this, even though you're personally affected, your own families are affected. But the fact is, the more that we talk about it, we get air pollution. We, because there's pollution outside, we stay indoors, which means we're consuming more energy. We're running air purifiers throughout the day. The generator has to run in order for the air purifier to run in order to make fake air indoors that is equivalent to the air that you get in Switzerland when you should just be solving the problem so you can go out and breathe and your kids can play. We also have somebody joining us. Sir, what do you do and how does it affect you? I'm an executive guard. और यहाँ रोड के किनारे ड्यूटी करता हूँ हाँ जी ड्यूटी करने के बाद आठ घंटे जाता हूँ तो नाक से मुंह से बिल्कुल ब्लैक सा काला सा डस्ट निकलता रहता है इस ये जो डस्ट है ये पोल्यूशन है और पोल्यूशन है हम लोग करते हैं कौन हम लोग करते हैं और हम लोग में जब तक सुधार नहीं होगा तब तक ये पोल्यूशन समाप्त नहीं हो सकता but yeah. sir, in the winter, all the fire and the fire are also burning. You are also burning. It's cold. How do you live in the winter? The most important thing is that these vehicles are burning. As many cars are running, they are coming. Every place is burning. No, as you have the employers, have you given you a heater for the winter? Yes, there is a heater. Everything is given. The biggest problem of the cars is the biggest problem of the cars. कि ये इससे डस्ट उड़ते हैं और ये पूरे नाक में मुंह में हर जगह लोग जो इसमें ओके सुनिए वे आर वेरी आउट ऑफ़ टाइम बट आई जस्ट वांट यू टू टच अपॉन दिस यू सेड द पुअर हैज टू स्टैंड अप कैन द पुअर रियली स्टैंड अप इफ ही हैज टू फेंड फॉर हिमसेल्फ थ्रू द नाइट इन बिटर कोल्ड व्हाई शुड emissions that we generate from our vehicles, as you very correctly said. So let's be very clear, Sarah, we all need to act. But in this, what the point I'm making is it's an equalizer. We're all affected. And the only bottom line to this is, yes, okay. government is aware of the problem. That's good news. Yes, government has taken some action. That's good news. But we are still way behind the curve. There's a lot more to be done. Lot more need to the be done. Scale of action is massive. 
So okay. keep up the pressure, keep up the anger. Speak because up, that's as we see on women people, way. it's important to speak up. It's also important to listen on this yaar, issue. Please. <laughs> I'm sure this is not the end. We'll be doing more shows on this, but for now we can see our time. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs>